Hi, I'm Shelby Emmett. I am the director of the Alex Center to Protect Free Speech. Uh, today we are in Austin for our annual meeting and yesterday we had the pleasure of having some protesters, which is the First Amendment attorney I absolutely love. Um, our members love it as well because it, they are public officials and they're used to it and they should be used to it. And uh, we had some great protesters yesterday, but what ended up happening is that some of the protesters and us decided to talk and shocker, we actually developed a little bit of rapport and we're gonna talk about that today. So with me, I have Bruce Double D, who is our private uh, sector chair of the state chairs, and Allie with me, who is part of Extinction Rebellion, and Allie was one of the protesters that we ran into. So, uh, Bruce, I wanna pass it off to you and tell us how did you two meet and what happened? Well, it, it's funny, I mean, yesterday, the protesters come every year. Um, and like you said, I get excited about that because they have so many different messages and your group had so many different messages. And the one message that I saw was a burning tree on the top, landscape, and then a green tree underneath. So it's showing that, I mean, our environment is in dire need and, and, and needs help. We need help. So I didn't go into too many of the events. I was just sort of hanging with the, the protesters and walking around, and that's when I met Renee. Um, and Renee was one of the protesters with the bullhorn. And I was, I was videoing it and I was sending it to my daughter and my kids. And I said, this is what free speech is all about. This is what Alex stands for, it's free speech. Um, and then we started talking, I brought water down and uh, um, I got confronted by a few people but they were just angry with me because I probably had a suit on and they really don't know me. Um, and then I just offered it to Renee and I says, hey Renee, would you like to join me at an Alec meeting tomorrow? And she looked at me and said, what? And I know a number of her friends were saying, don't, don't, don't go, don't go. Yeah. Satan, don't go. Um, and then she held out her hand and she says, uh, um, yeah, I'd love to. And that's where I met my new little daughter. But um, <laughs> she came up because Renee had to go to work. Yeah. Uh, and we both, <laughs> we sized each other up when she first came in. And it's about clarity. It's about having open communication. And um, so... Nice. Bought her a pass. She's sitting in here right now. We've gone to a, not, not, a number of uh, meetings, and we both shook our heads at the same time. Uh, so I know we have like beliefs, but yeah. it's an honor. It really is an honor having yeah. you here. It really uh, is, Allie. So you know, we've had protesters a, a lot, and a couple years ago in Denver, we did the same thing and passed out um, water bottles as well. And we actually had a great time, and a lot of people engaged with us and spoke with us, and I learned a lot, and I think they did too. But we want to hear more about you. So tell us what made you want to come protest, and what have you learned so far? Well, um, our group, Extinction Rebellion, is really focused on trying to address the climate change issue as soon as rapidly possible because the climate globally has already warmed one degree Celsius and you know the reports that are coming out from the world's leading scientists are that we have 1.5 degrees of warming before we hit tipping points that will like literally destroy civilization like constitutional liberties for life liberty and property you know if you are living in economic ecological collapse you don't have a guarantee of yeah. life liberty and property anymore you know so so there's like like on a values level like a lot of what I do I'm like an activist around climate change and I commit it like from this base value of like we're destroying our planet we're destroying the future of you know life on this planet for humans and you know the environment that sustains us and I don't see like I think the there is this conception that ALEC is a place where corporations design legislation to protect their interests. Mm -hmm. And so that's the image of ALEC, is it's a place where corporations have the say and get to pass boilerplate legislation. So in Texas and across the country right now, they're criminalizing people addressing um, oil and gas infrastructure issues. And so um, I have friends who have locked themselves to machinery. I have friends who have been um, on the front lines of this. And I've been supporting but not locking myself to anything. <laughs> Well, yeah. yet. Yeah, and, there you go. Um, <laughs> there is a difference between free speech and civil disobedience. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll talk about but I later. think from the baseline, it's like coming from this place of, you know, all the people who went and testified at the state house about this legislation, about how it was violating free speech. Um, you know, it was like, okay, that's nice. But then the interest of these industries are winning over in Texas. It's now a felony to impede operations in any way of, a, of an 
oil and gas corporation. It's also a felony to regulate oil and gas at the local level because corporate control of government is one of the biggest um, clashes here, you know, like, and, and it's something I think from both sides, we're talking about small government, but what I see is um, influence of corporate control of government, <laughs> like, because it's not, we're not actually limiting much power um, you just think we're, holistically. We're just transferring it, right? So it seems like we have the same concerns, it's just more on the private end versus our concern focuses more on big government. But I think we're sharing the same concern, and that it's, is there's an imbalance of power. Absolutely, I think, and the, you know, environmentalists generally they want local abilities to protect their environment and and they don't have it because oil and gas interests are controlling politics right now so, so that made you uh, when you decided to come protest um, what made you first want to come down and then what made you most importantly what made you decide that you wanted to just talk with Bruce and get to know him I mean for me the like I looked at registration for Alec and I saw you know okay for me to register it's more expensive if you're not in a for-profit corporation um, and I don't have hundreds and hundreds of dollars to spend to go and observe these meetings so to me it was being able to see what Alec is really like in a way that like I would say economically it's not accessible to be here for a lot of people who would want to know what your process is really like um, so yeah, I think it's just kind of a concern that um, the the legislation, the draft legislation that comes out of ALEC, um, I disagree with a lot of it, and I think a lot of it is harmful to free speech, actually. And and so we were just listening to like corporate rights, um, corporate speech needs to be protected, um, you know, and that what we need to do to encourage democracy is encourage people to vote with your dollars, but then. At the same time, Alec is supporting legislation that criminalizes people boycotting Israeli goods. Well, actually, so. that's not true. We do not do that. Uh, that is not one of our uh, positions. We have, have a very firm position on supporting uh, an, uh, an, those that are doing anti-Israel BDS things have the same rights. And I, what I will tell you is we do get a lot of pushback from our members sometimes saying that we should do that, but we have a very firm free speech position on this. So um, we've worked very closely with Student for Palestine groups. We've worked very closely with Christian student groups. So that one is definitely, and we are a hardliner on free speech. What, we, what we talked earlier too, and it was a number of things, and, and some of the uh, protesters outside says, UPS, you're a sponsor. And I says, I need to be here. And they didn't understand. And Allie and I, I mean, we, we believe in a lot of the same things. Mm -hmm. that I, and she understands a little bit more of why I'm here. Because I've gotten up and I've spoken at a few of the events. And I'm like, well, you're not seeing this yeah. the way I see it. You're not seeing it the way my company sees it. Sustainability is the way of the future, period. If you're not a sustainable company, guess what? Electric vehicles are our future. Yeah, now we have to find out how do we generate more electricity without using fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. And that's something le electric companies have. But what surprised me is in Alabama, it costs more, she told me it costs more in Alabama to go on the grid to have solar power in Alabama than using um, uh, fossil fuels. You're fined. You're fined yeah. for being on solar. In Florida, it's like they've regulated, it's illegal to be on oh, solar. Oh, in Maryland, I have to subsidize everybody on solar. Yeah, okay. So, so I mean, let me ask you guys, so yeah. when you guys first came together, what is one thing you both learned about each other that maybe you had a stereotype um, about the other because it was a, a different ideology or that you thought, what have you learned about each other? What's one thing that made you think, you know what, I'm glad that I decided to reach out literally and because of that, I've learned X. Well, I appreciate her. Um, because I see her, her beliefs, and it is my new next tattoo, so stay tuned on that one. <laughs> but I, I, I believe in her passion for what she believes in. And that's what Alex based on. And yeah, we both shook our heads at a, a couple of events. We both nodded our heads at a couple of events. But that's what free speech is all about. We're not going to believe on everything that everybody says at Alex. We're not. And that would I'm be creepy. Not. I would find that very weird. Yeah, it would I be, think that's one yeah. of the biggest misperceptions, right, is people think that we're all like this cult hook, line, and sinker of a grain with everything. And, and it's not. It gets pretty contentious, and people are debating ideas, so it's, it's right. really fun. But I think it was more of, uh, I, and I feel this way, that you understand a little bit more of why I need to be here uh, and why yeah. my company needs mm -hmm. to be here and be a part of Alec. So, Ali, yeah, tell us more. So, for, for you, what did you learn? Um, that either personally about Bruce that made you change your mind or anything generally about the organization? Well, I didn't have any preconceived <laughs> judgments about Bruce, so I'm like, it's great 
I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and Bruce for making that possible. Yep. Um, I would say, you know, um, one thing Bruce said, which you could verify, is I think the conception is that you draft this legislation and then a corporation has the same vote on on it as a legislator. That's one thing yeah. that is um, perceived from yeah. people on the outside. Yeah. Um, and so to to hear, okay, um, corporate interests are coming in here in an advisory way or to provide information or perspective. Um, and then the legislators who are participating in your process are the only ones voting in what bills you're putting out there. Um, that was interesting. And I mean, generally I would say I'm observing like a Republican conservative slant on the perspectives being shared, the books being signed, you know, all of that. Um, and one thing, you know, and, and so that kind of affirms a notion that I had. Um, but then it like really gets back to this question of like who is Alec for? Um, what's the real purpose of Alec? And is it to push a certain agenda um, and certain you know wedge of the political spectrum, or is it a place that could be open to broader dialogue? I, I think we need more, and we've stated this, and I've stated it at every one of the meetings I've been in, in the last 15, 16 years. Because when I started here, we had such a large contingent of Democrats that were part of Alec. Mm -hmm. But then it came to their leadership stated, if you go to ALEC, mm -hmm. we will not support you and you will lose your seat. Yeah, I will definitely and tell you, we have, we do, we are nonpartisan, so we do have Democrat members. Um, we don't have a, we've a lot, but we do have Democrat members. And I do think there is this outside perception that to participate would be wrong. And a lot of uh, leaders do get a lot of pushback for that. Um, but it is one of the reasons we created different uh, types of policies that we work on now. So for example, the Free Speech Center is very new. It's only three years old. Um, and part of the reason we did that is because we wanted to be able to work with other groups more and bring more people into the fold. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I wasn't liking, I was, I didn't like how I saw free speech turning into a political thing, right? Yes. The right is doing this, the left is doing that, and that terrifies me. Because in my work, both the left and the right are nuts when it comes to free speech. They're all wrong. Um, so it was really important, but to be able to do this now, we're able to work with groups like, we've worked with the ACLU on criminal justice reform. We've worked uh, with uh, Planned Parenthood when it came to donor disclosure issues. Um, so these things are happening, but I think a lot of organizations on the left won't acknowledge also as well that they work with us because they're also concerned about the pushback. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that double-edged sword where we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna throw them under the bus, you know, because we love being able to work with people. But I will say, I agree with you, it's been really great with other staffers wanting to work with other organizations because we're policy wonks. We are dorks and we love everything from the Constitution to the environment and we're just dorky, <laughs> honestly, from a staff level. So we're always just trying to find new groups to work with. So. Mm -hmm. We would love to work with your group, I mean, whatever you guys are doing. And if you have concerns about things, let us know. Because I think you know, we would love to hear your ideas because that just makes us want to do more. I think we can be creative. And I, I put this out to all Alec, too, um, is look at scholarships and look mm -hmm. at scholarships for some of the young leaders yeah. uh, that are coming up that have yeah. different views and different ideas, but having them here. Mm -hmm. A voice has to be heard on all sides. Exactly. You know yeah. what? And next time, I think what would be a great idea when we have a next meeting, uh, you know, could already set this up, and you know, maybe you could help us, and we would love to maybe bring some protesters in, you know, like a bigger format like this, and maybe just have like a roundtable discussion and really talk. I think that would be really cool. Under that'd yeah. be great. So that'd I just want to thank both of you um, because this is legitly the whole purpose of at least for me personally why I do this work. Uh, so to see you two come together and see each other as people and wanting to learn about each other, I think is will do more for society than whatever politicians are doing anyway. So thank you both very much. And I, I look at the, the end, it's, it's about you. And it's about you voicing your opinion. Be it right, be it wrong, whatever you feel, it's your constitutional right to believe in what your voice means to yourself. Share it with people because that's how you grow and that's how we've grown. And so. thank you, Ali, for you know, ex explaining to us you know, your concerns. Um, and thank you for having the courage to stand up and for your speech as well. So. Sure, I guess my last word would be that like, climate change is an existential crisis and I don't think on the political spectrum or the business spe spectrum, people are acting like it. And the stakes here are like literally the future, literally our children's lives. Our entire planet is at stake and what we've seen is, um, you know, 
like I think when it comes down to this relationship between corporations and government from the perspective of Extinction Rebellion and media, everyone is failing to do what is necessary in this moment. So that's my real message to people watching this is that none of us are doing enough and the stakes are incredibly high. Well, thank you two so much and my I hope pleasure. you guys enjoy the rest of the conference. You bet. Thanks thank everybody. You.